Which spice bomb is the best spice bomb? My name is Neeb, welcome back to Aromatics. Today we're gonna talk about six spice bomb fragrances. I bought six spice bomb fragrances so you don't have to. Yeah, that's that's just BS. I bought six fragrances, six spice bomb fragrances so that I can test them and tell you guys what I think about them. I enjoyed wearing some of them. I like spice bomb fragrances. I thought this would be a good video. So I didn't buy them so you don't have to, but I bought them to review them. So let's go ahead and get started with the original. For time's sake, I'm not really gonna focus mostly on those notes. I'm just gonna talk about what my experience was with these fragrances and what I think personally. We'll talk about longevity and just an overview of the DNA itself. No need to get too nitpicky. I know which ones I like and which ones I didn't really care for. We'll talk about why I don't care for them. A lot of times it just comes down to the performance. If a fragrance doesn't really perform that well, then I typically don't really enjoy them too much. So here we go. And it started with this bad boy right here. It's Spice Bomb Original. It looks like a hand grenade you pull out the pin and you're ready to atomize and just get explosive with this stuff sometimes if it ain't broke don't fix it and that's how i feel about this one on initial spray i get a little bit of citruses and that spicy obviously signature dna of spice bomb so pink peppers black peppers and whatever peppers under the sun you can find is pretty much in this fragrance it smells pretty nice it smells dry it smells aromatic and just spicy. It's simple and it smells good. I do get a couple of compliments while wearing this one and this is an EDT. Although it's an EDT, I got a decent amount of performance and longevity. So the sillage for this fragrance was really not bad. I could smell it and I was leaving scent trails for a good two hours. As far as total longevity for this fragrance, I got about five to seven hours. I will say in comparison to some of the other EDTs in this lineup, it was the best performing EDT, which is gonna lead me into the next fragrance, which is going to be Spice Bomb Extreme. Spice Bomb Extreme is an Eau de Parfum concentration and it was the second flanker if I'm not mistaken. My freaking go-to. This is easy, it's sexy, it's playful, it's sweet. It takes everything wrong with the original and makes it better. It takes that dry peppers, the dry spices, and it enhances it with a nice fatty dose of vanilla. So if you think this one is too dry and it, it is very dry and to be honest with you guys, spicy. This one solves that problem. It adds a nice dose of vanilla and it performs like a champ. I get eight to 10 hours out of this fragrance and you're gonna be projecting for at least two hours. Spice Bomb Extreme is hands down one of the best fragrances for men out there, period. I think that if you're a beginner or a novice, then you should absolutely have this in your collection. Despite the fact that I have a large collection of niche fragrances and designers, this is definitely a go-to of mine for sure. A lot of nostalgic memories with this, dates and all kinds of stuff like that. Spice Bomb Extreme, you really can't lose. After Spice Bomb Extreme, there were a couple of other releases like Spice Bomb Freeze and some of the other ones. I'm not really going to be focusing too much on every single one of them. And the ones that are harder to find, I didn't really pick it up either. Spice Bomb Freeze is one that's uh, not really Really that popular and so I just decided to pass over on that one and I went with the next fragrance and it is going to be Spice Bomb Night Vision EDT. So Spice Bomb Night Vision EDT is pretty much the similar DNA to the Spice Bomb except it adds some green sweetness here. So there are a couple of added notes and what I think this does is a similar DNA to something like Azaro's Wanted by Night except it's not the best performer. This flanker is where Victor and Rolf decided to get spicy and spice things up even more. They added some green apples, some nutmeg, red chili pepper, and sage. And I get it, you know, it did get kind of boring and this was the hit and everybody wanted something new and this was their response. The green apple really does stand out and it does give this a more green twist on this DNA, including that sage, the aromatic sage in the mid, but all in all, I couldn't smell this more than four hours. It's not a bad smelling fragrance, but I remember it being not so much balanced. So it was spicy, sweet, and sour, but the levels of spicy, sweet, and sour wasn't really balanced. And I felt a couple of times while wearing this fragrance is I don't really like it. It's a bit too sour at times and a bit too spicy at times. Never really figured out what it wanted to do. Not the worst fragrance in the world, just not the most balanced and not my favorite for sure. So like I said, four hours is what I got out of this one and I could smell it for maybe half an hour to an hour. For me, it's a no-go. So Spice Bomb Night Vision EDT was an easy pass. After Night Vision EDT, Victor and Rolf decided to uh, release an EDP version, and this one does have some redeeming traits and qualities. This is the Night Vision EDP, like I said. And they added a couple of different notes. I believe there's something of pistachio in the base, there's mastic, there's coriander, they added some clary sage, some rosemary, a lot more aromatics, a lot more different accords, and you get an overall better fragrance. So the one thing that I will say is that it does smell relatively close 
close but much more balanced so where the edt was a little bit sour you have a bit denser notes in the dry down the peru balsam and some of those pistachio chords it does really tame that sourness so now all of those, you know, unbalanced accords that I was getting in the EDT is now tame and much, much better. And with the added notes comes the added density and with the increased concentration also comes added performance. And that's exactly what I got with this one is increased performance, but not by too much. I only got about six hours out of this one and I could smell it for maybe half an hour more than I could smell the EDT. So not the best performer in the world, but it definitely smells much better than the EDT. Night Vision EDT definitely places itself in a family or a category of fragrances similar to that of Azaro's Wanted by Night. And this isn't too far off from that either. Reason I place these all in the same family is because they do similar accords. They all do spicy, sweet, and sour. It sounds a little strange, but actually it's pretty addicting. If I'm being honest, the first time that I was uh, introduced to that Wanted by Night DNA or even the Spice Bomb Night Vision DNA, I wasn't the craziest. But as I started to get reactions and women really enjoy Wanted by Night and the Spice Bomb Night Vision EDP, I started to really fall in love with this fragrance and appreciate it. It's kind of like sweet and sour sauce. At first, you're just like, what? Wait, what? Is it sweet or is it sour? But as you taste it and you get more into it, you start to appreciate it and you like it for what it is. And that's exactly how I feel about these fragrances, including Wanted by Night. But if I were to put it on a scale, I would place the EDT at the bottom of the scale. I would place the... Uh, EDP in the center and Azaro's Wanted by Night, I think is superior to both of these fragrances. So if you're looking for something green, sweet, sour, and spicy, I would much rather recommend Azaro's Wanted by Night because that's exactly what these do. So those four chords is what you're gonna get with all three of these fragrances. The best performing one, Azaro's Wanted by Night. Nevertheless, if you still want a Spice Bomb fragrance that does that type of DNA the best, definitely Spice Bomb Night Vision EDP. The one I don't regret is the EDP. The one that I tell you to easily pass, EDT. And lastly, I decided to dive into the spiciest fragrance, literally. It's got this capsaicin type of vibe, which is the chemical compound that makes food spicy. So although a lot of them do have that red chili pepper and gives off this spicy feeling, especially the original, it actually did give me heartburn. This is amped up a little bit more. Now, before you say, wait, what, you got heartburn? Yeah, yeah, I legitimately got heartburn with Spice Bomb. And I also got it with this one. And this is the Spice Bomb Infrared EDT. So Spice Bomb Infrared EDT does make this DNA a little bit more mature. It's Spice Bomb, the original, just a bit more grown up. If you look at the DNA of this fragrance, you're gonna notice that it's actually quite similar to that of the original, except there are a couple of different additions like that red berry at the top. So for that reason, this really does remind me of the original. It's still got that tobacco, the cinnamon, the saffron. Uh, there is a little bit of a fresher top to the original, and this one goes more towards the berry side. But the thing is, this versus this, this performs a little bit better. Actually, it performs much better in my opinion. The original Spice Bomb outperforms the infrared. And something about just this increased capsaicin vibe in the uh, infrared EDT, although it's still there in the original, just really didn't do it for me. So as far as the performance goes with that one, I got average four to five, maybe six hours at the most, and I could smell it for about an hour at best. So Spice Bomb Infrared EDT, I would say go with the original. And lastly, the most recent flanker is the Spice Bomb Infrared EDP. Unfortunately, with this one, there was something wrong with the quality control or something like that, but the paint started chipping off of the pin that you pull off but not the biggest deal in the world. The biggest deal is how this one smells. This one absolutely has a different smell to it. So it smells a little bit more grown up. It smells a bit more mature rather than with the infrared EDT, which is pretty much close to the original. This one enhances it. It makes this one a lot more of a mature version. There are some dark, dense, ambery resins in the base here. That leather, the tobacco, capsaicin is still there. This one smells more mature. So it does away with some of those fruity nuances. There is no ginger, there's no elamide, but there are those dark resins. There's that cinnamon and still everything else you're gonna get with the original Spice Bomb. So like I said, this is for the gentleman that's probably 30 and up that still enjoys this DNA or you wanted to graduate from the Spice Bomb Extreme to another DNA. I would highly suggest you graduate into the infrared EDP. So the way that I see this whole DNA to be is that if you are drawn to some of these fragrances, I would absolutely say that the number one Spice Bomb fragrance, and this one I think put them on the map, the fragrance that has made them a staple in the community and it will never go away. And if they go away with this fragrance, oh my God, it would be like suicide. Spice Bomb Extreme EDP. If they do away with this fragrance, I will never again buy another Spice Bomb. Not because they're not good, because they are good. I will have just, yeah, no. Don't, don't do it, okay? The next one that I would highly recommend off of my own taste 
is either one of these. But if I really had to narrow it down and pick one, I think I'm starting to lean towards the infrared EDP. Reason being, the Spice Bomb original is a bit more youthful than the infrared EDP. And I'm not getting any younger and neither are these fragrances. So the original has that citrus opening, some ginger, some zing. It is pretty attractive, it's pretty easy, the performance is great, the projection is a little bit better than the infrared, but the infrared lasts a little bit longer because it's the EDP. But nevertheless, I don't really wanna be too loud anymore, I just want it to last, I still wanna be heard, you will still be heard, but still, the DNA itself, it's much more mature, it's bolder, it's denser, it's just more grown up. Now, it's not gonna be for everybody, so just because I'm saying that it would be for me more so than the original, does not mean it'll be for you. If you're 25 and under, or if you're 25 to 30 years old, then I still think you should go with this one if you haven't already. If you're starting your Spice Bomb collection, you should absolutely start with Spice Bomb Extreme, for sure. It's the best version, hands down. When you get this one after Spice Bomb Extreme, it's gonna feel like something is missing. So for me, in all honesty, if I were to recommend just two, it would be Spice Bomb Extreme, and infrared EDP. I wanna make it clear though, guys, the infrared EDP, it's nothing groundbreaking. It's nothing just like spectacular or extremely different. It's pretty much the original just grown up and I find it to be a little bit bolder, denser, and sexier. The King Remains Spice Bomb Extreme. Gorgeous fragrance. I love this stuff. If you haven't gotten your nose on it, what are you waiting for? Spice Bomb Extreme EDP. This is genuinely a fragrance that I would classify as a panty dropper. There you have it. Six Spice Bomb fragrances and my personal recommendations. Let me know down in the comments which one is your favorite. And until the next video, peace.